I don't know why Corey thought it was a good idea to park my second gen now at the bottom of the hill when he's on a forklift. Now you're gonna take out both my trucks. We're planning on pulling. Oh, look at that. Good job. We are planning on pulling my truck up the hill in the garage. We just cleared a spot for it. Today's the day we're gonna, we got the okay on the insurance. Go ahead and tear it apart so we can start working on it. So we gotta take it up there into the garage. Where are you pulling it? Wait, is it in gear? Alright. He's telling me to put it in neutral like I don't, like I never drove. My door opens now. That's good. We can get around that. Yeah, we can. We need just a shade bigger garage. Hallways. This way. Okay. Oh, same. All right. See so when push it up into place. That's easier than I thought it was gonna be. Good. Yep. Today is the day. <laughs> Staying off the dog because she keeps coming in here. <laughs> this is the third time for this video. We um, started tearing down the track and then realized we probably need to take a video of this. The hood is already off. Um, he's got one battery out. The other one's still kind of crammed in there. But um, anyways, we've been talking. We don't know the best way. Now both dogs yeah. are in here. There's Buckweight and Mini Wheat. Yeah, um, so Mini Wee, Buckwheat, hello, welcome to the channel. <laughs> hello, because you've wrote this video three times. We're going with this video. Yes, so anyway, um, we have talked about how we're going to take this off, and we weren't sure, so the grinder is what we're going with. Um, normally, when we built this truck, the fenders in the front, this was all whole. It was one piece, that's how we built it. Um, the donor truck, same way, that's what we're going to do. But this, just two mashed right here so it's just going to be cut this will be a piece that'll be a piece and we're just going to take it off like that we've already taken the wheels off so we don't scratch those because thankfully they did not get hurt when oh, wow. yeah i don't know how either you're really freaking lucky but um yeah they did not get hurt so we took those off just to save them from us damaging them because we're pretty destructive Especially with the grinder. Yeah, so Hannah um, met with the insurance adjuster third, what would, uh, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday. He came here, took pictures, and didn't ask hardly any questions. 
didn't really talk to me a whole lot. So, which was probably good because this has been under a tarp and when we took the tarp off, I just started crying because it was hard to see. And um, he did his job, took pictures and insurance got back with us and gave us the okay to go ahead and start working on it. So that's... We pulled in here today. Today is, uh, well, Saturday, 4th of July weekend. Fireworks are going off outside. We are pretty lame people. Instead of going out partying and whatever, Hannah and I went on a short little date earlier down to Bo Max and Shoals, got some ice cream and some dinner. And then I said, hey, what do you want to do tonight? Do you want to go get into something or just work on your truck? She's like, let's just work on my truck. So we got home, got some shop clothes, and uh, now we're going to be tearing apart this truck. <laughs> what are you doing? But, uh, so yeah, let's, let's talk it. Oh, and right after this, we're gonna tear this truck apart. And then uh, we got a video of when we did the orange truck. We already tore the front end off the orange truck. So we're gonna tear this truck apart, um, talk about the damage and stuff like that. There's the, a lot of that. The frame, the frame is bent, but we can't really see it till we pull the front end off. But once we get the front end off, um, this dog. Once we get the front end off, we'll show you guys the damage and then we'll show you guys us tearing apart the orange truck and yeah let's let's get going round three man. I mean, it's probably still good. So for you guys wondering, this truck is 59 Chevy Viking, and it's sitting on a 1998 Dodge uh, one-ton second-gen chassis. Uh, so it's just simply been a, a body drop truck that had no floorboard in it. We set it over this frame. Uh, what we're just finding out, which we already knew the frame was bent, but the frame is... A lot more bent than we thought. Yeah, it's bent. Well, the radiator support, I mean, it don't have a core support because we had to cut all that out, whatever, uh, to get everything to fit. So I have these uprights coming up to hold the radiator, and then I have some angle bracing coming back to the frame to hold the radiator. Well, what happened was whenever the forklift hit, it shoved this one back and it kinked the frame back eight inches or so. So back here is kinked. So now we're gonna have to, and it's really kinked right here. So I don't know if that'll ever look right. So what we might be ahead to do is, Pan and I went and bought another second gen frame. I do not want to put another frame under this truck. That'd be a lot of work. And then we have to pull the motor, the cab and everything. So what we might have to do is just put this front frame section in there, uh, cut it in identical spots on the, don on the, the donor frame and then just sleeve it and put it back together. I'm not sure that's what we're doing yet, so we might just uh, heat it up and straighten it, but it's, it's pretty wrapped around and then it's kinked back here. So um, the, the good thing is if we do put a front frame horn on it, it ain't into the suspension or nothing. So only thing the front frame horn will be doing is simply holding the radiator and the front bumper. So it ain't like we're taking no structure out of it, but good thing is it didn't seem like it cracked the block. Uh, bring that over here, we'll show That's what I'm doing. Oh, 
All right, so as you can see here, this is the water neck for the lower radiator hose. And uh, we had to modify all this to go down to hit the radiator. So this on the factory truck would have just been uh, just a little stub right here. Well, we had to make it go 90 down. Um, it broke it off and we'll have to get that fixed, but it didn't shear it off at the block or nothing. So luckily it, it hit here. Um, this is what I was talking about, the lower frame rail, where this is, this mount here is the mount that holds the front doghouse of the truck on. So as you can see, it bent here, and then this here was our radiator support to hold the radiator. And then I put this 45 on it back to here. So whenever the forklift hit it, it smacked it here and shoved this back, which bent it here. But um, luckily it ain't in none of the, the steering or the suspension or nothing like that. So I don't know yet. We might just heat it up and try to pull it. We'll have to put it on a frame rack, which we don't have. Or we might just, don't hold me to this because I don't know if this is what we're doing, but find, a, find say this hole and we cut this front frame horn off this truck and then we have a donor frame out there, um, cut it in the same spot and then sleeve it inside. You don't want to butt weld it or even though this ain't holding nothing but the front end and the bumper, you still want it structurally. So if it ever, I'm not saying if it ever got hit by the forklift again, mm -hmm. but if, yeah, this, it won't. <laughs> if this truck was ever in a collision, you want it as strong or stronger than it was. So Luckily, it took the impact here, and it didn't carry the impact on back, or we would have had to put a frame under it. So we can just simply put, you know, 14 inches of frame under it, sleeve it, and call it good, which is probably most likely what I'll do. Um, it sucks, but we're going to rebuild it. Well, we Build back better. Build back better. <laughs> but it looks like the front of your engine's fine. It'd be cool now if we could put a couple batteries on it and start it or just put it together and hopefully it works. But it looks like the front of the truck's all good. Uh, show them the fans. The fans, we have a mess in here now, but this is where it hit the fan. It didn't bend the, the shroud or anything. We had this shroud custom made for this truck. Which is awesome that it did not bend this. Yeah, it didn't bend that. It's a little wobbly, but I think we can tweak it. Um, but the good news is this is where the pulleys hit was here. I think the front of the truck's fine. The, the motor is going to be good. The only other thing I kind of worry about is the transmission because the transmission was in first gear when it hit, but it was, thankfully it was on gravel. So I don't think it would shear the gear off inside the transmission or nothing like that. I think we're good, but uh, I don't know. This thing's got like 400,000 miles on it anyway. So we're going to, the way Hannah drives, it probably ain't going to last much longer anyways. <laughs> So we might be putting a motor in it later. It'd be cool if we put a motor in now. Yeah, it'd be freaking easy. This is a lot of work just to change your air filters. What? We had to tear this whole truck apart just to change your air filter. Oh. No, mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. I feel like you're zooming in on me. I'm not. I feel like it. <laughs> I'm okay. Not zooming in on you. Yeah, right. So, all right. Play the video of the orange truck getting disassembled now. All right, good morning guys. It is Sunday morning and as you can see here, we got the 59 Chevy Viking donor truck and what Hannah and I are gonna be doing today, we're gonna be pulling this whole uh, front clip off this truck and get it ready for her truck. Um, so Wednesday was the accident and um, we still haven't heard nothing from the insurance company so we can't really do nothing on her truck yet. So in the meantime, we're gonna pull this front clip off. Well, here it is. It's going to be about this low. <laughs> um, next, we got to take the inner fenders out because mine doesn't have any of that crap in it because it won't fit. <laughs> but now we're off to go get a frame. Yeah, so. Because it um, damaged the frame a little bit. It did end up bending the frame on hers. Um, I found a frame to put under hers but i think we can just take uh the front frame horns off and put it on hers but um 
just like I said, trying to get our ducks in a row. We want this thing back on the road as quick as possible because uh, believe it or not, this is Hannah's daily driver, the Viking is. So on good days, she daily drives it. Even on bad days, she drives it. And I told him this time it's going to have wipers because I didn't have that and I get caught in the rain in it all the time. <laughs> back to the shop just the with that okay oh, yeah. the truck died I thought maybe it was out of fuel because we never know how much is in it but we are rolling backwards oh god um anyways we never know how much fuel is in it and um it started, so I guess we're back in business. sides to make an inner structure and then we'll take this frame rail and sleeve it inside itself so then if this truck was ever wrecked again or whatever this wouldn't be a weak point it'd be stronger than ever if you just butt weld it it could crack or something there's no weight on the front of this truck so you could probably get by with just welding that up but that's not how we're going to do because if like i said if it's ever in a wreck it could easily snap this way so we're going to sleeve it inside here and even drill some plug holes in it so we can you know plug weld that plate in there and everything will be better than ever um, if this truck was hit if the truck was bent back here further we'd have to put a frame under it i guess you could section it but this is probably about the all i would do the, the you know to fix a frame okay i got the new frame rail on and uh, how i came up with my measurements was I took a little a nail and welded it here and on the other side of the truck and then that was able to hold my string for a straight line so what I did was I eyeballed the frame straight with the string and tied it to the chair over there to get my distance then what I did was took all my measurements from that side and transferred it to this side so for instance from the high side of this frame up to that string was four and three quarters, so I got four and three quarters from that side, and now this is what this side is, and then I had another frame outside I measured, so from seam to seam on that frame is 33 and a half, so that's what we got there, and then also there's a square hole in the frame here, and to this control arm, I got my measurement from that side, it was 17 inches, so I went over here and got 17 inches, so everything should be exactly where it was, Originally, I was going to measure from the floor up, but if there's a dip in the concrete or anything, we could be off by a quarter inch or an eighth inch, and I'm pretty particular, so I think this was the best way to do it, and uh, that's what I went with. And before I put all this together, I put 3 16 plate, made a box inside the frame rails, drilled some half inch holes, so then I could weld that to the original frame, and then as you can see, I drilled half inch holes into the, the frame horn, and I'll weld them up as well, and then weld this crack up all the way around, and then grind the face off, paint the frame rails, and it'll be like nothing ever happened. And uh, so yeah, that's where we're at on that. Oh, what you got going on? 
No. What, you're cutting? Yeah. That looks good. Get this. That's done. Cut. Shorten that up. We can put the orange dog on. Closer. Need to get a battery on it, see if it'll start up. Flip her over so we can see what we got. Take, Are you taking those yeah. off? Okay. Take a shot. So right now we're gonna cut this fender. We're gonna cut too much out of this fender and then set it on that fender and then trim them down, but I don't want to cut this fender exactly how we're going to do that one quite yet. I want to cut out more material than we need right now. So I'm just taking this blue Sharpie. Um, this Problem fender, is. Yeah, this fender is damaged there, but once we get it separated, we can beat it out with a hammer or... Well, that's what uh, they did over there. I know that. We can... <laughs> that side ain't that bad, so we might cut this out. I don't know yet. We ain't got there, but we're going to cut too much out of the fender now. And then go that way. And then my idea here is to go, just to make sure the fender's right, cut it in between the holes. So we're gonna cut it right there, and then cut it right here. And then we ain't going that far on that fender, so we can just simply cut this off straight. But try to keep it from, keep the holes so then we can line it back up and the, the badging fits perfect. And right now we have a um, plasma cutter. I need tips. Yeah. I ordered so, it here. yeah, but we're impatient and we're doing it now. We've got our handy dandy grinder right there. So that's what we will be using. All right, we just got it cut out. So, Let's see. There you can kind of see what our plan is. And then we'll line these holes back up to where it goes. Now we'll just get the shape we want. I think we could cut this before all this. Mm -hmm. Keep this. Yeah. All right, let's cut this fender out. That looks a little different. <laughs> Makes me a little nervous. Mm-hmm. Alright, so what we can do now is you see the dip in the hole there and the dip in the hole there. So 
So we can line our two holes up like that. And that'll give us our pattern for the back and pattern for the front. And that's that. All right, so we have a new skin graft. a pair of safety gloves on. Nah. 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 Alright. Let's see what this looks like. Something like that. Yeah, but I don't know if they should be shorter. What? What do you mean what? You want them shorter? Yeah, I think I do. Well, here you have it. We got her all stitched up and on there. My master welder here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what time is it? Like morning in the morning? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I think it turned out pretty good. Yeah, I really like it. What we're going to do here in the front, since we welded this piece in, we're going to just put some filler in here and then finish this out so that it looks like this has never happened. We're going to put stitches here but we should have cut it here to do that, but I think it would have been too busy there. So we're just gonna fill this in and smooth it out. I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. I just now noticed we didn't really have this plan, but four, three, and two. So it's kind of, you know, that don't really matter, but <laughs> it looks cool. Mm -hmm. And then as you can see, we got the Chevy Viking badge back on it and you can't see behind it. That was the whole plan to cut it behind that. So I think we're good. Yeah. Now we gotta get it sandblasted and paint and we're almost ready for the road. We ain't even fired up the time machine yet. It'll fire up. The, here, I'll show you guys this real quick. This is. That's what we thought originally just broke. Yeah, so this goes on the side of the block. This goes on the side of the block and then there's a water 90 um, here for the radiator hose hook to. Well, I thought this was broke, so I took this off to weld it up or put a new one on it, whatever. And whenever I unbolted it from the block, I took one bolt out. So this bolts up to the block. And once I took this off, this was still on the block. Borderline, and you see that bracket, this bracket that I just showed you guys was on here. I took this bolt out and the rest of it stayed. So luckily it didn't hit the block. I think it's good. Um, so yeah, now we just gotta get a new um, AC bracket and tensioner and all that good AC. stuff. AC? Yeah, the AC hangs. So this bracket- Are you talking a, air conditioning? Air conditioning, yeah. But it won't fit <laughs> on yours because of the radiator. Mm -hmm. um, so when this come down, the AC unit used to set here and I cut the bottom of the AC unit bracket also the radiator hose could go through there. So you could have AC on this truck if we mounted it the compressor here and then ran a belt to it and you could have air conditioning if the compressor didn't get in the way of the hood and then you still got to fit that the condenser and all i'd that, rather so. have windshield wipers well we're going to take it off big orange here mm -hmm. and put it on that one won't probably be done for the show we're trying to get done for it, but i just like to get it running and driving we got the battery one battery in tonight I started doing the wiring. It's still a clobbered up mess right now, but new batteries. Got the other battery tray here. I stick it in, <coughs> but I'm ready for bed. So let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Slave driver here. I, I went in earlier and made a sandwich. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to go shut the shop down. She's like, no, we can go work on my truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, ain't nothing getting done if we just go in early every night. And by early, I mean, 10, 10 o'clock, but <laughs> still, I mean, that's early.
guys you see behind me, the 59 Chevy Viking is back there. It's sandblasted. The only thing we need left for this truck is a bumper. And we were lucky enough, we had a guy reach out to us and he actually gave us a bumper, a guy named Alan Eves. Thank you so much for the bumper. We really appreciate it. And then we realized it was 10 inches too long. I told Hannah whenever we were getting it from the guy, I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is longer than the other one. She's like, no, no, it's, it's the same. And I'm like, I don't know. And uh, find out the bumper is 10 inches longer than the bumper we had on it. Um, so yeah, the truck's a 59 Chevy Viking, but instead of using the 59 uh, Viking bumper, we used a C70 when we first built it. So that's what we wanted to go back with. Um, apparently Chevy made two different bumpers, a 82 inch bumper, two in, 82 inch long bumper and a 92 inch bumper. Well, we had an 82 inch bumper on it before, and now we have a 92 inch bumper. So tonight's project is, um, we're gonna narrow, we're gonna narrow this 92 inch bumper to an 82 inch bumper. I'm gonna flip my camera around real quick and show you what we're gonna do. All right, so my game plan is this bumper kinda, can't really see it, but it, it kinda has a kick in it, kick in it this way and then kick back this way. So if you was to cut the ends off, it ain't gonna match back up because the distance is different. So what my plan is, I'm gonna take the license plate area out, cut this out, and then take 10 inches out here and then put this license plate patch back in it and then weld it here and here and back here and then one split there and then this way i can just grind that down otherwise i think when we patina the truck you'll have a, a solid line right here and it'll look kind of weird um so this way here we can we can hide it in the roll so that's my plan with that the truck looks great kevin prince sandblasted it for us uh he does amazing work um, we're gonna jig it down a little bit with some sandpaper, just kind of rough it up a little bit. Um, now you guys can tell some of the Bondo work that was done on this truck to join these fenders together. A lot of people think there's two fenders there, there is not. You got one fender here, and I stretched it 14 inches with a piece of 14 gauge in the back, is how I did that. Um, We'll, we'll bondo all this up and make it look good, primer it, and then we'll fake patina this truck here in a little bit. But it's coming along good. We plan on taking it to its first show, back out on the show uh, this Saturday. And don't mind the coolant leak, I forgot a, a lower radiator hose. But yeah, this thing's coming along coming along good and I'm ready to get, get her back on the road. There we have it. The center section, license plate area is cut out of the bumper. Now I'll take out 10 inches what or five inches this way five inches that way five inches this way and five inches that way and look at current situation on hand of them all right getting hit somewhere there's Tana mowing the yard at dark <laughs> pieces cut out you guys can see what all I took out Hannah's finally back in here and not shooting rocks at me finally why won't you see it okay. <laughs> you're like Ray Charles out there yeah <laughs> but there's our pieces now we'll remove this one, this one, this one, this one, and that'll go into place. And there we have it. We'll weld it together and I'll show you the result. All right, tell us, tell us about it. There you have it. So a little bit of, you can see a little bit where I need to fill in the holes, but looks good to me. You rest it out, you'll never know. Looks good to me. <laughs> Are you happy with your work, ma'am? It ain't my work. I mean, are you happy with the job that's being done to your truck? Yes. <laughs> but I'll have you know, I'm not paying for this. <laughs> Feel the thunder, ride the lightning, 
hope this rain don't wreck the Viking. <laughs> oh, something. Probably that thing you're burning outside. The that fire round fire. thing. <laughs> well, we thought we were going in, um, but we're not. I mean, we might here in a little bit, but. She's like a slave driver. I want this thing done. So we ordered samples of things and instead of like real resting the truck, we've been going back and forth. Um, we were either going to try to paint it and like fake patina paint it or real rest it like we did. And I'll show you what we did to fake patina like paint it and I really like it. So here's what we did. We used goose poop and um, dog poop, and we mixed them together, and here we are. We've got this with my Tiffany blue color, and I really like it, and it's slick to touch. It's like really nice. So I think that's what we're going to do. I mean, it's got a really good look to it. So this might be it. Who knows? I may change my mind tomorrow, but I think it looks really good. I'm gonna sleep on it. What do you think? I feel like we have five days to finish the truck and we gotta order goose poop now. <laughs> I think your eyes are tired. We need to go in. Wear me out. <laughs> My stepdad showed up. Really been a big help today. Turquoise. Yeah, boy. Blue track. Before he's mixing up some more paint, but it is really teal, like really, really teal. What are you doing? Video. <laughs> Too much brown? It is uh, Sunday morning and the truck is done. We got the truck out, the truck is going. We got a bad radiator, unfortunately, but um, we got to put a new radiator in it. And the truck went to its first show yesterday. Where was it? Cave City, Kentucky. Yeah. Um, out of 200 trucks, the Viking brought home first place. So it's back. It's winning. I got to show you my trophy. It's Coolest pretty sweet. freaking trophy ever. <laughs> Here, hold on. All right. Here we go. Look at that. That is cool. Mm -hmm. So Todd Johnson that runs uh, the shop truck gathering I show, mean, it says he built it. Yeah, shop go. truck gathering. Like how cool <laughs> yeah. is this thing? 
He was super, it was a really good event. We had a great time. We'll definitely For the be, first year, it was a really, really good turnout. Like over 200 yeah, it was trucks. 200 trucks, so. But uh, the Viking is back. We slacked a lot this weekend. We didn't get uh, no videos of the truck at the show. Actually, I did get a couple of rollers of it at the show. Um, I got a picture of Hannah. We were both running on six hours of sleep in two days, so we were That does not work exhausted. well for us. Our eyes were like bloodshot red. People were talking to us, and I don't I had to apologize to the guy one time because I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of out there today. But um, the truck's back. We like it. Uh, we did a little bit of different patina on it. It's a little bit uh, too dark in pictures. So today, since the since the truck's done and it's already won its first trophy, why not let Sam the whole truck down? Because we're indecisive on what we want to do. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to be re on the truck. Just to make it a little bit more different than it is. But that's in the next video. Um, this is basically just a rebuild video of this truck. It's back. I can move back in the house. <laughs> no. But, um, so yeah. I guess we appreciate you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and follow. And we'll catch you guys on the next one.